first night of program, a copyrighted feature, Coast to Coast, presented by Campana, the makers of Solitaire, the new cake makeup, and Campana Bomb, the famous hand lotion. Theater time. Broadway is buzzing with excitement and eagerly waiting to welcome an opening night performance at the Little Theater off Times Square. There'll be a crowd of onlookers and autograph fans on hand at the entrance to greet the celebrities who always attend the premiere on the Great White Way. So let's not miss a minute of the excitement. It's just a short walk around the corner. Will you join me? There are lots of uniforms in the crowd tonight at Broadway and 42nd Street. Shall we cross the street here? Well, here we are at the Little Theater off Times Square. Have your tickets ready, please. Have your tickets ready, please. Good evening, Mr. First Nighter. The usher will show you to your box. Thank you. We'll go right in. Well, here we are, and every seat is taken. Advanced theater notices have heralded tonight's play as a thriller, packing plenty of excitement in every scene, with the biggest surprise coming at the very end. Its title is The Chinese Gong. And it was written by Arch Oberler. Topping an all-star cast is our popular leading lady, Barbara Luddy. And opposite Miss Luddy is her guest leading man, Olin Soleil. The play is pure fiction, of course, and does not refer to real people or to actual events. And now, before first curtain, let's listen to Eric Sagerquist's First Nighter Orchestra. John. Well, this is a dinner party, isn't it? John, will you behave yourself? We're waiting for Mr. Wilson. He was unavoidably delayed. Well, I wish he'd hurry up. I'm hungry. Uh, what a room. Looks like a Chinese junk shop. John, how can you say such a thing? The Wiltons have one of the finest collections of Oriental art in this part of the country. I think this room is simply fascinating. Fascinating? <laughs> I think it's nothing but junk. Look, look at this thing. What's it good for? Now, John, that's a genuine Chinese gong. The chances are it's twice as old as you and me put together. <laughs> Looks like a tin soup plate to me. I wonder what it sounds like. John, don't you dare strike that gong. Oh, I'm not going to hurt it. <gasps> now you've done it. Hi, George, that's got a nice tone. Just listen to it. John! Oh, Mr. Clark, no. Don't do that. Uh, uh, oh, oh, it's you, Mrs. Wilson. I, I thought you were out of the room. No, I'm sorry, my dear. I told you not to strike it. Well, will someone please tell me what harm there is in striking a gong? None whatsoever, Mr. Clark, but... Well, you see, this doesn't happen to be an ordinary gong. What do you mean? This gong is... Oh, here comes Bob. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm so late. Good evening, Mr. Wilson. Hello, Wilson. I'm so glad you came, Bob. Mr. Clark was just asking me about the gong. Say, that reminds me. Did someone strike that gong just before I came in? Yes, dear. Mr. Clark struck it twice. I stopped him before he hit it the third time. Good. Say, what is all this? Is there something wrong with me or with the gong? Oh, everything's all right, Mr. Clark. Just a little uh, family superstition, that's all. You see, this gong is... Uh... Oh, well, let's forget all about it. Forget it, nothing. Young man, I want to know what this is all about. Yes, please tell us. It sounds simply fascinating. Well, I... Look here, Jean, you tell the story. I don't tell it very well. You're right, Bob. Uh, shall we sit down? Yes, yes, sure. sure. Well, the story of the gong begins in Shanghai... Bob and I went there, you know, on our honeymoon. It was almost ten years ago. We were very young and very much in love. And our stay in China would have been simply perfect if it hadn't been for a certain man who decided that he was in love with me. We'd met him on the boat. His name was Count Brennikoff. A Count? Oh, how fascinating. Don't interrupt. Well, the Count's attentions to me became more and more insistent until finally Bob decided to take matters into his own hands. One night, without my knowing anything about it, Bob went to see Renicroft to demand that he stop annoying me. The Count was staying at the same hotel that we were. Yes, please? Is Count Renicroft in? What name, please? Who is it, Wong? Well, well, if it is not the bridegroom himself... Come in, Wilton, come in. 
Oh, all right. This is an unexpected pleasure. Here. Here, take this chair by the window. Thank you. Boom. Boom. Now, where did he go? Boom. Y- yes, please. Ah, there you are. Ah. Uh, yeah, that will teach you to come the first time I call you. Now then. No callers, Wong. I do not want to be disturbed while I'm visiting with Mr. Wilton. Understand? Yes, please. Ah, you may go. Go on, get out! Ah. Well, now, Wilton. And what do I owe the pleasure of this little visit? I'll be as brief and to the point as I can, Winnikoff. I came here to ask you to stay away from us. You... You want me to stay away? Yes. On the boat, we couldn't help ourselves. We had to endure you. Now that we're in Shanghai, we want you to leave us alone. Do you understand? (laughs) I understand better than you think, my young friend. (laughs) So, you are jealous, huh? My own feelings have nothing to do with this. I'm here because of my wife. You're annoying her, Renikoff, and I want you to stay away from her. (laughs) So, I am annoying a little American woman, am I? (laughs) It is most amusing. (laughs) It won't be so amusing if you persist in playing the Don Juan. Great Scott, man. Can't you see when you're not wanted? My wife doesn't want your hand-kissing, your cheap compliments. Shanghai is full of women who'd appreciate your expert continental lovemaking. Why not give it to them? You are insulting, sir. And you're annoying. I've been as patient with you as I could possibly be. I thought an old man like you would have more sense. That is enough. You will go. Tomorrow I will speak to the little one myself. I will tell you. You annoy my wife again and I'll hit you so hard I'll jar your ancestors. You... You threaten me? Yes, Renikoff, I threaten you. What are you going to do about it? I will report this threat to the authorities. Report and be hanged. But I'm warning you for the last time, stay away from me and stay away from my wife. Is that you, Bob? Yeah. Well, well, Bob, where have you been? I've been waiting for you for hours. Sorry, dear. I had some business to attend to. Bob, you didn't go to him. Well... Oh, Bob, you didn't. Yes, I did. I've stood all I'm going to stand from that hand-kissing four-flusher. What did you do? I told him to leave us alone from now on. Oh, Bob, you didn't. Certainly I did. Gosh, Jeannie, now you're not going to be angry at me, are you? Angry at you? <laughs> Bob, I've never been more pleased in all my life. Oh, you don't. That big ape. He might have been God's gift to the women on the Volga, but he certainly is the pest of Shanghai to me. Well, I guess I settled that. I'm sure he won't spoil our honeymoon anymore. Spoil our honeymoon? Oh, Bobby, how could anyone spoil that? I love you so. And I love you. Oh, Bob, I'm so happy. It's been the most glorious honeymoon a woman ever had. Mm, it has been great, hasn't it? We could only stay like this forever. You, you mean here? In China? No, you silly. I mean so terribly, terribly in love. We will stay in love, Jeannie. I'm going to see to that. Yes, Bob. You see to that no matter what happens. Jeannie? The trouble with you is you've been cooped up in this hotel room too long. Come on now, get dressed. We'll go places. Oh, no, Bob. I'd rather stay in. Stay in nothing. You realize we've been in Shanghai almost a week and you haven't even bought a souvenir? Haven't I? You know doggone well you haven't. Gosh, Jean, that isn't normal behavior for a woman. Come on now, get dressed and we'll go shopping. I'll buy you anything. Anything at all. From a Chinese pagoda to a chop suey factory. From Hollywood to New York and right across the country, girls and women are saying... Goodbye, winter. Hello, springtime. I'm changing my complexion. Yes, I'm facing the world with a dewy, fresh, solitaire complexion because I love its thrilling smoothness, its springtime color tones. And when it comes to hiding freckles and small skin blemishes, solitaire is just too clever for words. I know, too, when I use solitaire, my makeup will look fresh and faultless for hours and hours without redoing So won't you join me in a beauty salute to springtime? Greet Easter with one of the most important changes you can make in your appearance. A thrilling, exciting change in your complexion beauty. Once you try Solitaire, Campana's new cake makeup, you'll want to start every day with the long, lingering loveliness of a Solitaire complexion. For nighttime dates, Solitaire will give you a bewitching charm that you never dreamed possible. And is Solitaire kind to your skin? Adorably kind, because Solitaire has a rich lanolin base that helps prevent skin dryness. All right, ladies, isn't that a challenge to match the new season's loveliness with a new loveliness of your own? Ask for Solitaire cake makeup in any one of six flattering shades. 
And remember, Solitaire gives you a big compact. Three inches in diameter for only 60 cents. There's also a handy 25-cent trial size. Insist on Solitaire Cake Makeup, containing lanolin, a product of Campana. Second act of the Chinese Gong. But, Bob, we simply have to buy something. We've pawed over practically everything the old man has in the shop. Yeah, but his prices, Jeannie. I'll bet he doubled them the minute he saw us coming. Shh, here he comes. Here, Missy, a bracelet I speak of. Handcuff, good jade, no glass. Oh, they're beautiful. Very cheap. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Now, look here, Mr. Suntai. We'd like to do business with you, but get this straight. We're not millionaires by a long shot. Too much money? Well, that's the general idea, yes. Oh, right. What if I dollar? No, really, Bob. I don't want this jade at any price. Uh, listen, Mr. Ty, what we would like is something we can take home with us to use around the house. I mean, a vase or a lamp or something of that sort. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, look, see, very fine vase. Very old. No, wait. This gong, how much is it? No, no gong. Yes, yes, gong. Mrs. Wilton wants that gong, she gets it. How much? Well, wait, Bob. I, I want to hear the tone first. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's all right. Hit it again. Oh, I want this gong, Bob. Shh, not so enthusiastic. You want a million bucks for it. Well, come on now. It's my turn. Let me hit it. No, no. No more. What? You mean you don't want me to hit it again? No, no. No hit. One time, all like. Two time, all like. Three times, no good. You mean it's bad luck to hit the gong three times? Yes, Missy, bad luck. Very bad luck. Huh? Terrible thing happen. Oh, yeah? All right, what's the bad news? How much? You want buy? Sure, I won't buy. How much? Fifteen dollars. Sold. Jean, the gong's yours. Well, I'm, I'm not so sure I want it now. What, you mean because of what he said? Mm-hmm. Ah, forget it. That's one of those silly superstitions. Come on, Mr. Tai, wrap it up. We're taking it with us. All right, Mr. Ta- but don't forget. Don't never hit gong three times one day. Bad luck, Mr. Ta- Very bad luck. Will you please get away from that gong? Gosh, Jean, this thing intrigues me. What do you say we swat it again and see what happens? Now, Bob, you don't really think anything would happen, do you? Well, don't forget what the old man said. Don't hit three times one day. Very bad luck. Terrible thing happened, Mr. Terrible thing. <laughs> Bob, wouldn't we be embarrassed if you hit it in the hotel caved in? Yeah, wouldn't we? Me in my pink pajamas. That'd be terrible, all right. Mm. <laughs> well, go on, hit it. Uh, you mean... Uh... Hit the gong? Certainly. Maybe it'll start a nice, exciting earthquake. Or don't they have earthquakes in Shanghai? Mm. Well, what are you waiting for? Well, I was just thinking. Bobby, don't tell me you've lost your nerve. Well, gosh, Jeannie, it isn't a matter of nerve, but I was just thinking, after all, this is the Orient. And funny things do happen. Oh, you big baby, give me that mallet. Well? Now hold on to your hat, because I'm going to give this gong the fatal third stroke if it's the last thing I do. Here it goes. Did it? Certainly I did it. Well, when does the excitement start? When does the... Oh, Bob. I'll go see who it is. Yes? What? Mr. Robert Yelton? Yes? I am from Shanghai Police Department. You will come with me, please? But... But why? I have here one for your arrest. You are charged with the murder of Count Nicholas Renica. Isn't there something I can do? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Wilton. All we can do is wait. Oh, and Bob in that filthy cellar. I can't bear it any longer. Please try to control yourself, Mrs. Wilton. You make it very difficult. I... I'm sorry. As your lawyer, I assure you I've done everything possible. But 
Well, to speak bluntly, the law must take its course. But Bob didn't kill Renikov. I know he didn't. Of course he didn't, Mrs. Wilton. But I assure you there's nothing further I can do. We can only wait. Wait, wait. I'm going crazy waiting. Day after day in that hotel room. I, I tell you, I can't stand it anymore. Why won't they believe Bob? He didn't kill that man. Everyone knows he didn't. Unfortunately, Mrs. Wilton, the evidence in the case indicates otherwise. What? Now, please understand me. I'm not saying that I believe the evidence, but there it is. And it's quite damning, to say the least. Your husband was overheard quarreling with Count Renikoff. He threatened the man with bodily harm. Unless he ceased his, might I say, unwelcome attentions to you. But that doesn't prove anything. No, perhaps not. But a few hours later, Count Renikoff was found murdered. A knife in his back. And on that knife were the fingerprints of your husband. Oh, no. I assure you I'm telling you the facts, Mr. Wilton. Your husband's fingerprints were right there on the handle of the dagger. I saw them there myself. But, but, but that's impossible. Quite. And yet it's the very evidence that will put a noose around his neck. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait. It's best to face it now, I know. Bob will hang unless we do something. I know he will. Those fingerprints on the dagger. I tell you, it's almost as if some power of evil had put them there. As if some supernatural... Why, Mrs. Wilton, what's the matter? I... I just remembered. What? Speak up, child. But it, it was nothing. Nothing at all. Well, let's say you gave me a bad time for a moment there. Your face went so white I thought something was wrong. I say you had a pretty rocky time of it, haven't you? Look here, my child. Why don't you appeal to the American consul again? Perhaps he can do something. I just came from the consul. Oh? Well? He... He says there's nothing he can do. Yes, I expected that. Count Renikoff is a very influential figure in Chinese nationalistic circles. An issue, you know. If the American authorities try to interfere, well, all sorts of international complications might arise. International complications? What do they mean to me? It's Bob I want. You have three minutes. In there, please. Bob. Oh, Jean. Oh, Bob, what have they done to you? So thin, so white. No, I'm all right, really, I am. Oh, my darling, let me hold you close. Oh, Bobby, what's happened to us? We were so happy. It's that gong, Jeannie, that confounded Chinese gong. Oh, no, Bob, that can't be it. It it just happened, that's all. I'm half crazy with worrying. Tomorrow they're going to try me for murder. Jean, me, Bob Wilton, murderer. Oh, Bob, please. I'm sorry, dear. These weeks in this filthy hole, I'm just not myself, I guess. Oh, my darling, what a horrible honeymoon I'd give you. Oh, no, Bob, please don't say that. Those days we had together, let's not forget them. Glorious days, and, and we'll have them all over again. I know we will. Yes, Jean, we will. I'm going to be brave, as brave as you are. It's the one thing that's kept me sane all these horrible weeks, knowing that you were outside. Waiting for me. Yes, Bob, I'm waiting for you. I'll always wait, darling. And the curtain comes down on the second act of tonight's play in the little theater off Times Square. Smoking downstairs or in the outer lobby, please. Everywhere you go, women are doing extra work, subjecting their hands to extra punishment. Yet have you noticed how some women keep those busy hands well-groomed, soft and youthful-looking? You can do it, too, by choosing original Campana Balm when work and weather threaten to make your hands look coarse and unlovely. Begin tomorrow using original Campana Balm before you start work as protection against dirt and grime. And be sure to use it every time after your hands have been in water also to help bring back the soft, adorable smoothness that your skin loses when you scrub it frequently with soap and water. Original Campana Balm acts so quickly and with such positive results that you, too, will soon be calling it the before and after lotion. Remember that smooth, protected, unchapped hands add to your efficiency, bolster your morale, and please the man who holds them. Lack of certain basic ingredients for a while caused a shortage of original Campana Balm. We're happy to say that these ingredients are again available, and your dealer can now obtain supplies of original Campana Balm. If he does not have it, ask him to order it for you from his wholesaler. If you prefer a lighter lotion, ask for the new Campana Cream Balm, the creamy lotion with lanolin. Be sure you get either original Campana Balm in the green and white carton 
or the new Campana Cream Bomb in the yellow and white carton. Suntai want to see you, please. No, no, I, I don't want to see anyone today. He say must. Please, Missy. All right, show him in, whoever he is. Thank you, please. You come in, please. Well, what is it? What can I do for you, Mr. Suntai? You remember me, please, Suntai? No, I, I'm afraid I don't. Oh, yes, I do. You're the old man in the antique shop. That's right. I saw you gone. Yes, you, you did sell us the gong, didn't you? Yeah, I sell. Well, what is it you want? I, I don't want to buy anything. Soon I no come sell. Then what do you want? Mr. Wilton, he very much trouble, no? Yes. Clive tomorrow looking very bad, no? Yes, very bad. Mr. Wilton, no kill that man. No, no, of course he didn't. No. Please go away. I'm very tired. I'll see you some other time. No, no, wait. Please. I help. You can't help us. No one can help us. No one. Please, Missy, don't cry. I help. Mr. Wilton, good man. Lenikoff, Eva, I know. Please go now. No, Missy, please listen. Soon a very old man. He know many things. He know Mr. Wilton, no kill man. But what good does that do? They're trying my husband for murder tomorrow, and neither you nor I nor anyone else can stop them. Oh, yes, please. Soon I stop. What do you mean? Soon I know who killed Eva one. You, you know who killed Renikov? Yeah, I know. Who? Tell me. Who? My son. Your son killed Renikov? Yeah. My third born, Wang. Wang Renikov seven. Lenikoff, evil man. He beaten Wang many times. Wang kill him. But, but my husband's fingerprints were on the knife. I know. Wang, tell me. Mr. Wilson, come talk, Lenikoff. Mr. Wilson, very angry. He picked knife up from table while talk. Put knife down. Go away. Wang wear kitchen glove. No show a knife. Why, oh, see... Bob handled the knife while he was talking to Renikoff, but in his anger, he didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then when Bob went away, Renikoff hit your son. Your son stabbed him. And since your son was wearing gloves, only Bob's fingerprints appeared on the knife. That lie. Oh, oh, but what's the use? The police will never believe that. Oh, yes, police believe. See, Wong like everything down on paper. You mean that's a confession? Yes, please. Wong like everything. Chinese. Police savvy. But, but I don't understand. Your own son, they'll hang him. Ah, no hang Wong. Wong, good boy. China so big, won't go far away. But why, why are you helping me, a stranger? My family very old, very humble. No can see good man die. So I come see you. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Oh, no, 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 Missy, please, no cry. Everything fixed. Everything all right. Goodbye, please. Well, Jean, we're on our way. Yes, Bob. On our way home. That's a grand word, isn't it? Oh, Bob, dear, put your arm around me. I always want to remember my last glimpse of China like this. You beside me and your arm tied around me. China. I suppose I should hate the place after what happened to us there, and yet somehow I don't. Of course you don't. We'll always remember China. Not for those terrible weeks, but because of what we've been through. It's brought us so very close together. As if we'd been married for many years instead of just a few weeks. Yes, I guess that's right, isn't it? We are close together, aren't we? 
Oh, yes, Bob. We're going to stay that way forever. Well, dear, I forgot to ask you, that gong, what did you do with it? It's down below in one of the trunks. You... You mean to say you didn't throw it away? Well, of course not. Why should I throw it away? Well, because of the bad luck it brought us. Don't tell me you've forgotten already. The gong didn't bring us any bad luck, Bob. It was a stroke of good luck our buying it. How do you figure that? Well, if we hadn't gone to Sun Tai for the gong, he'd never have known who we were. He'd never have come to me with his son's confession. Well, that's one way to look at it. But believe me, I'll never strike that gong three times again. You can bet on that. story of the gong, folks. From that day to this, neither Bob nor I have struck it three times. Uh, we're not superstitious, no, but... No, but we know when to leave well enough alone. Why, right, George, that was an interesting story. Oh, wasn't it, though? Oh, John, just think what might have happened if you'd hit it a third time. Yes, I... I'll have to admit, Mrs. Wilton, that I'm glad you stopped me before I struck this thing. Except it was a close call. I had my hand raised like this... <laughs> Uh, I didn't mean to. Oh, good heavens, that was the third time. What'll happen now? Well, I don't know, but... Bob, it's happened. Just like that night in Shanghai. I, I'm going to faint. Come in. Well? What is it? Yes, for heaven's sake, speak up. What is it? What's happened, Jenkins? Beg pardon, madam, but dinner is, uh... Times Square. Miss Lottie and Mr. Soleil are in front of the footlights. Did the first nighters like it? Listen to the applause. Let me invite you to be with us again next week at the same time. By special request, we are presenting next week a beautiful play about Easter. It's entitled The Third Day. Special Easter music will accompany the drama. Be sure to tell your family, including your children and your friends, to listen to this special Easter performance. magazines, paper bags, and boxes. Paper is a vital war material, and there's a serious shortage. Sell your waste paper or give it to a local charity. And now we move out of the theater and into the street. What do you say we stroll down Broadway? Good night, Mr. First Nighter. Good night. The First Nighter program is a copyrighted radio feature. Don't be tormented by itching. You can get soothing relief in a jiffy with DDD prescription. This soothing, greaseless, medicated liquid brings quick relief from itching caused by eczema, skin rash, industrial allergy. Get a 35-cent trial bottle of DDD prescription from your druggist now. This is Mutual.